Hey, Build Show. Steve Basic Architect. Yeah. I've never done a video where I've stood in this kind of assembly all around me. So what are we looking at, right? We, we have the slab underneath, the stego. That's pretty typical. But we got a superior wall around us, and then we have concrete planks above us. I'm in the drive-out workshop walkout. I call it a drive out because we actually have a garage door there where we could pull in cars here if we wanted to, but we're beneath the garage here. Now, one of the issues when we were working with superior wall was we have this wall that goes down the front of the garage. It's about 54 foot long. They were really concerned with the idea that that 54 foot, there wasn't any lateral shear being developed in that length of wall. So that's why we have these two monsters, right? So we're talking, these are probably about eight foot or nine foot walls. They're about 14 feet on center, which means in the 54 foot, we'll probably have about 20 feet on both sides. They align with the garage door in the middle. It's a five car garage, double, single, double door. So these pretty much align with that, but the real idea here is, is that we have this 54 foot wall here and it's not braced on the inside. It does have the plank up above, but in the slab below, but nothing in between. And we have, you know, grade has got to go all the way up to the top of the topping slab on top of the plank because it's a garage, right? So grade isn't down here somewhere. It's actually a couple feet up of, from where it would typically be. And so that wall really wants to try and bend to the inside. So the way that you engineer against that is by inserting two walls here, we would call them shear walls, um, but they're basically attached there and there. The planks above them are pretty much free floating, right? This wall is not connected to the plank. It's just connected to the wall. And its only purpose is to aid in the bending of the wall. So one way to look at it, and we'll reiterate this when we go back to the studio, is that 54-foot wall, think of it as a beam that's laying on its side, right? Instead of wanting to bend like this, it's wanting to bend like this. The load's being implied from the side, not the top. So the ability to resist that bending in the 54 feet comes from inserting these two nine foot walls about 20 feet in. So anyways, we'll go back to the studio. We'll pull up some drawings. We'll talk a little bit more about shear walls, why these were needed, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll see you back at the studio. All right, shear walls. Yeah, and it's S-H-E-A-R, not E-E-R, right? These aren't like translucent walls. These are actual shear walls that, uh, <clears throat> what you call it, anticipate bending and uh, battle against it. So we have some drawings here from Superior Wall that we can uh, go through. We'll talk a little bit in depth about uh, shear bracing and why we do it and um, kind of the basics behind it. So got big red in hand. You know, that's always a good discussion. So uh, let's get after it. All right, so we have our detail here. This is the workshop walls. Um, if you saw the previous video, that's where we did the house. The house wall is right there, and there is the doorway that allows transfer from house basement to garage workshop. And you can see that workshop, you know, goes from there all the way across here to there and to there. 54 feet in length, actually, um, by 28 feet. So really good workshop. Now, a couple things that we had to do in there is we developed a stairwell because we wanted to be able to walk from the workshop and go down and have a doorway there so, so that we could get 
to and from the garage above down to the workshop without uh, having to go outside and go around. We do have a big door here where it's an actual roll-up door. Um, you can see here the note. We have our 10-foot X1 walls, which uh, those are, I believe there are 21 already insulated. But the important thing here is we have a 19 inch pour ledge. So we have that ledge that goes around and that's what our 10 inch um, precast slabs are sitting on there. So that's all been predetermined and then obviously full face height rebar to stiffen that wall. Um, and along the back side here, notice we have it called out here. Those are four inch EPS frost walls. So because this is a walkout, this whole length of 54 feet here has a frost wall underneath that these walls are then set on top of. So we have basically 14 feet of foundation wall on the back side here. Um, but today, what we we're mostly talking about is this 54 feet on the front, right? So when you do a 10 foot tall wall and it's 54 feet long and then you backfill it, well, you get some pretty high lateral force of the ground pushing on that wall. And if you can think about it for a second, even though it's a vertical wall, it's still pretty much acting like a beam. So if I didn't put those shear walls in and I just had resistance there and here, that beam would have to be strong enough to resist a certain level of bending here, right? Right? There's going to be a certain level of displacement because of this, we'll call it lateral load. When you're dealing with shear, right? Typically it's a lateral load. It's not a vertical load. It's a lateral load. That's why it's called shear. Um, vertical loads are something different. So shear loads, lateral loads, those are ground pressure. Um, and they're ground pressure on I don't know what you would call it, an eccentric wall, meaning that, you know, if I have a wall that's on a footing and I have ground up to here, but I have a slab inside here, well, this wants to push, it wants to push the wall over this way, but it also wants to push the wall in a bending motion inward, like I've illustrated here, right? The other forms of lateral load, but beyond ground pressure are wind, Right On the walls above, the wind is blowing on the side of the building, trying to bend the building. And, of course, earthquake. That's when the house just shakes in every direction, but it means this wall wants to go that way, this wall wants to go this way, this wall wants to go that way. So you have to uh, develop reactions to all of those lateral loads, and that is basically your shear load. So, structural engineer at Superior Wall figures out and says 54 feet, that's way too long. This deflection or displacement of this wall exceeds anything in the realm of satisfactory. So we need to buffer that bending moment. Basically, if we have a support here and here, just like if, um, looking for some clear ground here, if I had a column here and a column here and a column there, if this bending gets too much, the solution is to simply add another column, right? And then that minimizes the bending on those longer spans. Well, in 54 feet, what we did was we put these in, and you can see they're at 20 foot, uh, 6 and 3 quarters, it looks like, 12, 10, and then... That one is probably the same 20, 20 feet or so. But we've inserted these shear walls here. And the shear walls are 8 foot 5 inches. So they're down 
right at the top of that pour ledge. They align with that, but I'll highlight these a little darker. And what these shear walls now are doing is when you get this lateral load that's pushing, well, you got it. Our new favorite structural word. They're providing a reaction to this lateral bending of the wall. And in doing so, they're basically stiffening up that wall system so that rather than having it as 50 feet, now our spans are 20 feet 6, 12, 10, and let's say 20 foot 6 again over there. And um, so we've significantly broken it down. So instead of that beam spanning the full 54 feet, now it's spanning 20 feet 6 is the worst case condition. We've cut that by more than 50%, probably on the order of like 42%. Of the length of the wall and because now when this lateral load is pushing these react against it and it keeps those walls from bending um, due to the lateral load that they're there now one of the greatest examples of that that you can find in history is you'll see you know these giant cathedrals and they'll have you know on the side of the building They'll have their roof system going up, and then they'll have, you know, these giant buttresses that come out and fly out on the side. Well, all that is doing is, is you know, this wall wants to bend out, and then these are just reacting against it and keeping that straight. So it's no different than this. The orientation might be a little different because this is in the ground, but it's still basically just a simple loading condition that's a lateral load this wall wants to bend right it wants to not be straight it wants to bend like that so you have to insert these two shear walls in and cut down on that span which is basically cutting down on the amount of work that that wall has to do to battle that lateral load and get it into a successful range. Now, 54 feet, we needed two. If this was, say, 64 feet, it might have been that these two would have then have to become three to satisfy it. So that's where the engineering comes in. But that is my shear class for today. So hopefully you enjoyed that, but that's what we're doing out there. And uh, that's a nice little intro to shear walls at the foundation. Well, there you have it. Probably not everything you ever need to know about shear walls, but damn good start. So um, kudos to the guys at TB Builds. Did a great job out there installing the superior walls. Um, it's shaping up to be a really cool project. A lot of cool things happening out there. So um, always, always exciting watching these buildings come together. So if you're looking for more, you can find me on all the social media channels, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, um, Facebook, Steve Basic Architect. I'm out there, YouTube. Go check it out. Watch. I'm trying to share as much information as I can. This is all stuff that we're doing right now. So there's no uh, archive footage, although... You know, every once in a while we'll put up something, but uh, but even the archive footage, certainly worth watching. So go check it out. And um, if you're looking for even more, Unbuild It Podcast. Yeah, that's where I team up with uh, good friends Jake Bruton, Peter Yost, and we have at it. Talk about everything building. So you can check that out. That's out on YouTube. And uh, so all looking good. Until next time, long live our buildings.